in Florida, the ocean temperatures off the scale. Yeah. I mean, literally, there are temperatures so high, they are off the scale of the color contours on some weather maps. Much of Florida is seeing its warmest year on record, with temperatures running three to five degrees above normal. Some locations have been setting records since the beginning of the year. The hottest weather has come with an intense heat dome cooking the Sunshine State in recent weeks. There's also one of these heat domes that is supposedly forming in the, um, uh, in the Midwest. The heat dome has made coastal waters extremely warm, including downright shocking temperatures of 92 to 96 degrees in the water in the Florida Keys. That's boiling for them. More typically, it would be in the upper 80s tweeted uh, Jeff uh, Barrett Deli, chief meteorologist at uh, in Tampa. Uh, Miami's heat index has soared 110 degrees on Monday. It reached 100 on at least 30 days. And there's a big difference, incidentally. I mean, I think this hopefully goes without saying between like 75 and 80 degrees, those five degrees of temperature and 110 and 115 or 113 and 118. Um. You have intense flooding in Vermont. It, it, yeah. it, it was like just on the border of being like super, super catastrophic. And now it's just sort of catastrophic. Uh, I mentioned uh, in the headlines, New York Times uh, reports on a study that 61,000 were killed in Europe last year in heat waves. Uh, there's a story in the Washington Post saying the earth is at its hottest in thousands of years, like 125,000 years. Of course, that's not, they can't do it exactly. But here's the point, and, and we'll talk tomorrow. We're going to have Bill McKibben on for uh, a little bit of time. He's got a little bit of a window. But um, the idea that, I mean, I had this conversation with, with a guy recently. Not a bad guy. has some uh, interesting ideas about some things. But... Um, the idea isn't so much that, okay, the earth has never been hotter. M maybe it has. But we know this almost for a fact. The earth has not been hotter at a time where we have developed, like, civilizations. Yeah. And where we have, um, you know, been non-migratory and non-tribal. Millions of people living in the desert or in uh, areas that are susceptible to flooding um or yeah, islands i mean yeah everywhere we have built these cities and our transportation systems and our way of lives uh and located ourselves based upon the weather as we understood it and it had been for hundreds if not thousands of years and it's changing dramatically and we uh, the expense the cost the difficulty the human misery that is going to be i mean there are there are countries major you know like parts of pakistan and india that maybe become unlivable very shortly um and w w we seem utterly unprepared for this there's a lot of people i think who think they're going to make a lot of money off of it but um it, it, it it's uh, you know there's going to be some clean water profiteers in the future without a doubt we're also going to have the uh, you know a difficulty in terms of growing food yeah. uh i mean there's there's a whole host of things uh because it, it it if we're not at an inflection point already we will be uh soon enough um i i think almost inevitably at this point um because we're just not seeing any of the political will that is uh necessary um but we'll talk more about Bill with Bill McKibben tomorrow. It's going to be too short, and we're going to have to have another. We're going to have to have him back on. But it's you know all we can get him for tomorrow. So um, I just wanted to give everybody a heads up about that. Has Bill seen the uh, clip where Obama tells Malia that it's actually okay that he didn't do anything, and that's fine if we blow past like three three degrees Celsius? You our, have you even heard of this clip yet? What? Yeah. Well, we have. Didn't we'll, you send we'll it, it last night? Half, yeah, maybe. we'll do it in the fun half. Okay. Well, let's do it now. Yeah, sure. All right. Number 11. Number 11. I have not seen this yet. So what was this? This was uh, 
I guess, Obama speaking to... Obama did an interview with uh, Hassan, Hassan bin Hunch yeah, on, uh, right. on, on about two weeks ago, but he posted this clip a few days ago where he was like, here's the advice I would give Malia and her friends. Oh, sorry, it wasn't actually with Malia. Okay, yeah, it was with Hassan. But well, essentially... But he's, he's, he's directing it to his... Daughter. Yeah. To his yeah. daughter and like, I guess the the sounds like maybe Malia's not uh, visiting as much as he might want. Maybe some of her friends are in DSA or something. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, one can only hope. Malia comes to me. She says, "You know what? She's 24. All our friends, um, we sometimes we talk about climate change, and we just feel like there is no way we're gonna." be able to solve this we're looking at the science it feels as if we're on a trajectory that we're going to sail past this uh two degrees centigrade right. benchmark where after that potentially things are getting cataclysmic and so i'll be honest with you dad a lot of my friends they just feel as if what's the point because mm. the world's burning and and there's nothing i can do and I, and i said to her pause it for one second i just want like like uh, well, I'm getting a lot of vibes. I've not seen this clip, but I'm getting a lot of vibes of Jerry Seinfeld complaining when his kid came back from college and uh, Jerry Seinfeld then, you know, becoming for years, dedicating his life to like, I can't do my gay king bit at uh, colleges, Co you know, college kids have gotten, I mean, just, I can tell this because of my own sort of like uh, failings as a father. Um, when you start, when you, when you make the point of, uh, of the age of your kid in that way, yeah. She's 24. In other words, let me tell you something. Let me. She doesn't, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, and she's coming. Now, if you're going to your dad, who was the president for eight years, and you're saying, all my friends feel completely bleak about this major, major issue, you know it wasn't just sort of like, hey, dad, you know, I just off the top. It's like, why didn't you do anything, man? Yeah. Why didn't you do anything? How could you do nothing? Yeah. And uh, the context is probably a little different than the average uh, political debate at dinner. Different over conversation Thanksgiving. Well, yeah. I'm yeah. sure it's almost almost like like when Seinfeld's kid comes back from college and he's like, Dad, you can't you can't keep doing that gay king joke. It's 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 not funny. It's rude, you know, and oh, God, I mean, that's the vibe I'm getting here. Just right. because, you know, I, I get uh, I, I've been there. <laughs> they just feel as if. What's the point? Because mm. the world's burning and, and there's nothing I can do. And I, and I said to her, well, or she asked me, what, what should I say to them? Right. And what I said to him is, and what I said to her is, look, um, we may not be able to cap temperature rise to two degrees centigrade. But here's the thing, if we work really hard, we may be able to cap it at two and a half instead of three. Mm -hmm. Or three instead of three and a half. That extra centigrade, that might mean the difference between whether Bangladesh is underwater. Right. It might make the difference as to whether, um, you know, a hundred million people have to migrate, <laughs> right? Or only a few, right? In these incremental changes, that matters. Yeah, I, I see. What it you're makes saying. a difference, sure. and and, and to it's be worth able, fighting for, and it's, it's worth fighting and for. And you can't descend into nihilism and not try to save those yes, 100, 200, 300 million people. It matters. That, that's a lot of people. Yeah, it's a lot of people. <laughs> that's a lot of people. But 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 the reason that there is nihilism is because you are already conceding that we are unable to stop this the, and that we, we have hard. to do enlightened centrism about the burning of the planet. And if your daughter, who is the daughter of a president, probably has the most access of like almost any child her age in the United States is having that reaction. What do you think the level of despair of people in the global South are who are going to bear the brunt of this and don't have the ability to like be members of the wealthiest country on the planet where, I mean, there's still a lot of immiseration in the United States, but the, we all know that climate change makes its effects most acutely felt in the global South where there's even less protection. I mean, I, the, the, Here's the thing that bothers me about this is that this and 
I'm trying to separate it from like my knowledge of what his post presidency has been and, and, and what his presidency was. But there is only really one response for someone my age or his age, and particularly, you know, with the role that he played in uh, our society. Yeah. Um, and that is when your kid comes to you at that moment is to say, I'm sorry. We effed up. Mm -hmm. We effed up. And um, it is unclear how bad this is going to get. And then you can go into, you got to keep fighting because it's all going to be about mitigation. And it's going to mean the difference between uh, a billion lives or maybe two billion lives or a billion lives and a hundred. We don't know, but we effed up because you need to communicate the failure that we have already undergone to stop this from happening. But he can't do that because no. his ego is tied into it. Like the nihilism is setting in, uh, uh, dear Mr. President, because you did not act in that way. And yeah. so when you say like, you know, we may not be able to cap at two or even three degrees centigrade, like the nihilism is a result of that kind of pass passivity yeah. by the wealthy and the elite in the world who did not act with the urgency for the rest of the world that's going to bear the brunt of this. And I'll tell you what, uh, he, I mean, he'll be able I'll tell to you what elevate he really his said. house in Martha's Vineyard. I'll, I'll, I'll he'll tell be you able to really elevate said. it. I'll, I'll tell you what he really said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 it's, and frankly, it's the same thing that I say to my, to my kids. He, he, you know, he, he has a little more uh, force behind it, which is, ultimately, our lives are going to be a little bit inconvenienced. Uh, but we, broadly speaking, are going to be okay. The pain is going to be felt with, you know, around the world. And to the extent that it's in this country, it's going to be, you know, uh, uh, felt, uh, you know, in the southern regions. And it's going to be, um, you know, uh, lower income people. I mean, that's the that's the, the truth of what he says to calm down his 24 year old. Like, you're going to be OK. I mean, the rest of the world may be on fire, but like our our house is fire retardant. And uh, that's like basically if it, if it goes up two degrees like he's talking about, we are talking like incredible devastation. This I mean, we're not we're not striking a compromise on the budget. We're talking mass migration. We're talking hundreds of thousands of deaths. We're oh. talking. I mean, millions, millions. Oh. I'm being conservative because I'm not a scientist. I, I actually I mean, I, I'll tell you what I, I bring this up every now and then. What uh, James Lovelock, he just passed away. I think it was a year ago. Uh, he was the, the guy who found the hole in the ozone layer, which we ultimately fixed uh, in, in, for the most part. And they had asked him 15 years ago. Uh, I think it was, you know, about uh, stops, you know, like recycling or whatever it was. And he's like, yeah, we're having this conversation about 20 years too late. Yeah. Um, I mean, according to him, he walked this back because I think people were like, dude, you can't say that. But. I think he said by the end of the century, uh, Europe is sub-Saharan. And um, he said, we could be looking at a situation where we lose 80% of the world's population. And that, we're talking billions. Um, now, they wouldn't, it's not a question that they would die overnight, right? I mean, it would be um, uh, parts of the world become inhabitable, but Food we would supply. have huge... Yeah. famines right um we would have wars over resources um i mean this is and and so it, you know anytime anyone in in my generation and older is asked like what do we you know my friends are afraid and it, the first thing has to be an acknowledgement of like that's not an irrational fear uh but there's there are things that you can do that can mitigate what happened but we effed up don't you you know like you guys gotta take control and and yeah. in many respects not listen to to your dad that's the problem is like the biggest problem with is what he says is this infantilized language of we just got to work hard what is that was that what you did you did were you working hard we just got to continue the work hard work you were doing because like from my perspective you didn't do like what was obama's climate legacy right but the, the thing about Obama is that he has always been a religious adherent to the uh, 
the arc of history bends towards justice and like this general approach of passivity towards making change he has he said that all the time i mean and, and so like the arc of history is now going to bend towards uh fixing the climate crisis in the end we'll all be okay except for the millions that die and starve and it's just like this general like that attitude is what feeds nihilism that is what's so ironic about that answer yeah like because it doesn't it, like nihilism lack of meaning when obama says we just got to continue working hard that that creates nihilism because that's not what i understand words to mean right we've got to do something a little more specific than just yeah yeah like maybe uh job harder on the, on, the, on the trip right yeah like get tangible this is what i failed to do as president i failed to create these benchmarks i failed to be able to convince it you know like it, uh, the vague generalities so we got this go back as you were yeah and that's what happened with like McConnell and the grand bargain and all that stuff and a anything with McConnell. The Merrick Garland stuff was like, it'll work out probably. McConnell was probably a, uh, on the level in terms of negotiation. Like there's always just this like ineffable, nebulous, like it's probably fine. There has attitude. arguably not been a president for our gen for 35 and younger, for 40 and younger people or, or a political figure who has been more of a figurehead for nihilism for younger generations than Obama who ran on hope and change and then had this kind of attitude as a gov in governance. And how those those ideas of hope and change sort of like hollowed out once he became president. <laughs> yeah. You were right. That was a good clip. Man. <laughs> it gets me. Uh, it gets me mad. mad. Yeah. <laughs> it gets me mad. Because this is again, you know, he's not the. He's not on with, I don't know, I guess Charlie Rose is not doing a show, but he's, he's on with a guy who is like As the his audience. Yeah. yeah. Work harder? What, did, what the F does that mean? Roll your sleeves up. Yeah. Try to get this TPP passed. You know how you, uh, you go into uh, your job at uh, 9? <laughs> yeah. Head in at 8.15. To stop climate change. Stop climate change. It's kind of Bush eight, and Obama. Well, I can't do Obama. I can't do Obama, so I just do Bush. Go I do the work. one president. I mean, it would... It, Look, we need to... Uh, Roll up your we, sleeves. We need you to uh, go play basketball. No, we'll stop climate change. Don't kneel. Well, maybe. Don't. Oh, yeah. Don't, no, don't kneel. Just Jesus. Go, go in half hour early. Stay a half hour later at work. <laughs> Instead of making five phone calls, make... Figure out where you ten. can be more valuable to the company. Climate change will be solved. Ugh. I, I, I didn't need that. <laughs> I didn't need that at all.